Hello, everyone. I am so excited to see people here during the summertime. That's exciting. I figured everyone would be out by the pool. But here you are getting ready for the ACT now? Yeah. I think everyone wishes that they were out by the pool if that's something that that is enjoyable. My name is Laura. I am an ACT expert and I've actually helped over 4,000 students. So I'm really excited to be here with you. We actually have about 37 people here in our room. And in addition to being here on camera, we have ACT expert Justin, who's going to be helping us out, and we have two Grocket experts available as well. So we've got a lot of support here, and one of the things that we want to do is learn a little bit more about you and what you're planning on for the summer, where you are in school, and how we can be most helpful. So in terms of full screen, you should be able to go up to meeting and then click on full screen. And we'll figure out all the technical issues now rather than sort of in the middle of our presentation. We have the room for 90 minutes. We probably won't use all of that because again, it's, it's the summertime for a lot of you and we wanna make sure that we use your time wisely. And this is our kickoff event. So we're gonna be talking about the things that you're gonna be doing going forward. And one thing I wanna let you know, the public chat right down below, everybody can see that. So we just ask that you use really respectful language in that chat. And we're gonna be fielding your questions as much, um, as quickly as possible. Okay, so we see that some people are already thinking, oh my gosh, I have a lot of stuff that I want to do. But one of the things we find is that organizing everything is one of the biggest challenges. So you have this idea of what your goal score is, and you know where, or perhaps not, where you are right now. And you think, okay, I've got energy. I even can find some time, but what do I do first? So that's what we're going to be talking to you to you about. We want to take our years and years, we're very, very old, um, years and years of expertise and help you. That's what we're here for. This is a free event. We're here because we want to make sure this is as easy as possible on you. So first, let's take a look about information you've already provided for us. So over here we have, what have you used so far? Let's see what everybody's talking about. So far it looks like books are winning. So which book, you can tell us in the chat box below, is it the big red book? I have that one over in a bookshelf over there. Is it the big red book that everybody's using? Okay, so some people have the green ACT book. We've got Barron's Princeton Review, the Kaplan ACT book. If you don't have the red book yet, we really recommend it. You can buy either version. There's either the three practice test version, that's an older version, or the five practice test version. You know who makes that book? And Justin's saying it's the real ACT study guide. Do you, do you know what company makes that? The actual ACT people. And it seems like Kaplan would have made it, but it's actually the ACT people. Yes. And Aparna, I'm so glad to hear you already have it. So if you don't have it yet, it's usually on sale on Amazon.com. And don't worry, I don't, I don't get a commission from however many books they sell. It's just that we want to be as helpful to you as possible. And that's one of the tricks of the trade is knowing what tools to be using. So no matter what other books you're using, it's not the only book that you're going to want to have, but it's such a good one that you don't want to miss out. So, and it's one that you can oftentimes afford without a problem. Um, because you can find it, a used version even would be great. And so that's a great question of how do I use it? We're going to talk about how to use that. That's what part of the study plan is, is knowing what to do when. So you're going to find our first week we're going to do math. I'm not going to tell you exactly how many questions to do and how you can do them, whether you're using Grocket or the Red Book. So we're going to tell you exactly what you need. So taking a look at how much time you have, that's going to influence how much studying you put in if you don't have a lot of time. It looks like people have about three to five hours. We can tell you studying 10 hours a week at this point, this far out, is not going to be necessary. If you have that amount of time to devote, that's great, but you're not going to need 10 hours a week. If you're disappointed, I'm, I'm sorry. I can see if I can find other things for you to do. And Justin's going to put the link for Amazon for the book so you guys can can get that book if you don't have it already. And again, we don't make a commission off of this. We just want to make sure you're using the tools that make the most sense. 
So when did you first start using prep tools? It was really helpful. If you haven't bought any yet, that's fine. Um, you're not behind in the game. And you know, we did an event before the last ACT and people were scrambling. So I'm just loving the fact that you are here today, eight weeks out from test day. That is really, really exciting. So another thing that'll be really helpful for us to know, and we can put a poll together for this, but it's also nice to hear you in the chat down below. And Habibi, that's a great question. The ACT always gives one practice test for free on their site. So you can always download that. And then if you actually search in Google for practice tests, you might be able to find some of the old packets that are floating around. Um, but the Red Book's really affordable and you get five practice tests from that. So we really, really highly recommend that one. So knowing what you're going to be looking at today is going to be helpful for you. And we want to just remind you of what we're going to be covering so that you can think of other questions that you might want to ask us while we're here. And Justin has the link for the sample test. So that's the free one that the ACT always provides to everyone who accesses that. We want to make sure that you have all the resources you need. So we're going to hop right into our classroom so that you can see. So this is our kickoff event, as we mentioned. You have, this is the first week in the eight week program. And by program, you don't have to sign up for anything. We're gonna post everything to our blog. And one thing we found out, did you know that YouTube is the second most used search engine? I bet you guys can tell me what the first search engine is. If you have a question, you say, oh, I'm gonna go, yeah, Google, you're gonna go Google it. And Isaac says Yahoo. Well, you know, Yahoo would like to be considered the Google of, of the search engines being right. <laughs> so we found that YouTube, of all things, is the second most used search engine. So we put together videos of how to use Grokit if you want to do your practice there on YouTube and we have the links for you. So everything that you're going to see here today it's going on our blog, it's going on YouTube, it's not going to disappear. If you want to grab a piece of paper and a pencil or you want to open up a Word document or have a tablet open, that's fine too. But we want you to know that this isn't going to disappear and this is something you can use again. So let's say you're going to take the test a couple of times. You can watch all this again on YouTube. So in fact, um, people will be be viewing this as a recording. So if you have friends that weren't able to make it today or you know you're going to be taking it again or you have younger friends who are going to need this at some point, we're going to put it on YouTube so when people search for ACT prep they're going to be able to find this. So Anashi is saying do you pay for Grokit? Grokit has a three-day free trial and then we do have a monthly subscription but the purpose of this plan is not to say oh well you're going to have to sign up for Grokit or your score is not going to go up. That's not very nice, first of all. And second of all, actually, Grokit's a super useful tool, but we're not going to tell you that there's no way to improve if you're not using Grokit. We're going to show you how to use the Red Book as well. So that's why we're recommending the Red Book. It's the most universal book for ACT test takers in that people have access to it, and it's the one people use the most. Again, we don't get a commission, but it's the one that people oftentimes have. So we're gonna show you what to focus on. You can use Grokit, absolutely, and we'd love to see you there, but we want this to be useful to you no matter what. So if you're here and you want more points on the ACT, you're in the right spot. So whether you're gonna buy Grokit or not, that's not what we're concerned with. We're concerned with making this an easier process for you. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is just study plan basics, and this is actually helpful for anything you ever plan for. We're going to do the top five tips. We did an event earlier that was the top 10 tips, so we're, we're going to narrow it down to the top five, especially at this point in your prep. The top 10 tips altogether also have to do with right before test day, so those aren't going to be necessary at this point. We're going to talk about your study plan outline. You don't even have to come up with your own study plan outline. We actually sat down and did it for you because we're very organized people. I actually have a master's in library and information science from Florida State. So that was a really fun thing for me to do, sit down and do the outline. And then your week one mission. We are Grokit. We often refer to ourselves as being on the Grokit ship. 
So we're going to tell you what your mission is, should you choose to accept it, and you can complete that mission using your red book or using Rocket, or just in general, we'll show you what types of things to be studying. Now, it's going to be super helpful for us to know what grade you're in, and it's what grade you're going into. And if you're not, not in 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade, you can actually tell us in the chat box below. If you are a middle schooler or in elementary school, some people might actually be surprised, but the ACT is used as um, a test to just check to see if you're eligible for certain programs. So we certainly have students who are a lot younger than other students. Okay, so Fola, that makes sense. Um, we count our grades. Kindergarten doesn't have a number. So that's how it's a little bit different. I don't think we have any middle schoolers here. That's another thing to note. Rocket is very international. We actually track things with Google Analytics, um, and it's fun to see where everybody's hanging out when they come over to Rocket. Um, and actually, in India, we have word of mouth presence in India. Apparently in India, Grokka is, is the go-to. So it looks like we have a lot of seniors. We have some juniors and some sophomores, uh, maybe one or two freshmen. And that's important to us for a couple of reasons because we, first of all, no one wants to take this test like 17 times. It's just not very fun. But in terms of being a senior, we know that you are really going to concentrate now. And interestingly, and seniors might be able to attest to this, junior year is oftentimes harder than senior year. So juniors, you want to study during the summer and not wait till the school year because, so for seniors, can you describe to juniors going to junior year, how is junior year for you? How is junior year? How'd that go? How was that? It would took a lot of time. So it's not necessarily something that you can't survive, and you'll find that college is oftentimes um, way easier than junior year. It's just so much time. Oh, Erica, that's really neat to hear. It was, it can be a lot of fun. Anna, I'm so glad you said that. You can do it if you're dedicated. Time consuming. Ayana, that's such a good way to say that. So it's not that it's going to um, take you out. It's not going to roll over you like an NFL linebacker, but it's just going to take a lot of time. And I think that juniors are surprised by that, and you want to plan accordingly. So if you can get your prep in now and not wait to the last minute, that's really, really helpful. <laughs> and sleep as much as you can now. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So we actually, you can follow us on Twitter. That's one of our favorite things to talk about is how much sleep is required and how it's hard to get all of that done when you have lots of homework. So we're here to help organize. We're here to help you find some focus and you're going to be able to follow what we're doing on Twitter. You're going to find us on YouTube and on our blog. That way you don't have to check in at any point. You don't need to be any specific place at any time. It's very much on your own time, on your own schedule, but we're going to provide the structure. And if you're studying for APs, we currently have four APs that you can study for on Crockett. And we know that a lot of students prefer to wait till the end of the year to study for them, or to not study for them, but to really work on Crockett for that one. So the first thing that you want to know is where you currently are. And good thing, I love this part of it, Crockett has diagnostics for each section, and they only take up to, not even all the time. It's from 10 to 15 minutes, so up to 15 minutes. So if you haven't taken a diagnostic on Grokket yet, it's going to take, and you can do this for free with your three-day free trial. That's not a problem. You are going to be able to do that for free and check your current skill level. So can you tell us in the chat box about how many points do you think you need overall to get to your goal score? Even if you don't know what your current score is, do you know, are you trying for one extra point? Are you trying for 10 extra points? Do you know? Go ahead and tell us in 35 extra points. Um, <laughs> I think you're telling us our goal, your goal score. Wow, you already got a 30. That's awesome. Jasmine, I like how you said that. You want at least three more points. That's a really good way to put it because a lot of our students actually wind up surprising themselves on test day. 
5 to 6 extra points. You have a 29 already. That's awesome. Now, if you're not sure what your goal score is yet, that's a good thing to start with because we don't expect everyone to get a 36. There's no way. <laughs> that's not how the test is built. So check with the schools that you're planning to apply and figure out what an actual reasonable score for you means. Sometimes it is a 34, but oftentimes it's something like a 27 or a 25 or something that's not going to cost you all of the sleep in the world. That's right, Justin. Check out and make a good goal score. So figure out what your current skill level is, set your goal score, choose your test date, and then this is a really tough one and we can't do it for you, but you have to schedule time to study. You actually have to put it into your schedule. Otherwise, it seems to just slip away through your fingers. And then in terms of checking your progress, this is a really important thing to do because a lot of times you're doing a lot better than you think you are. You don't want to talk yourself out of a good score on test day. You want to know what your strengths are. So Destiny, that's really good to know. You want at least six more points. You can figure out which sections you really want to grab those points in because it all averages out. We are going to go in depth with the top five ACT tips and then we're going to roll out our study plan for you. So in terms of the top five ACT tips, read through these now and figure out which ones you already know. A lot of times the top three are ones you know already. If you're just starting out your prep though, you may not have known these. So can you tell us how is the ACT different than the SAT? I mean, you might have opinions about it, and actually we have uh, our ACT experts and Grocket experts are actually have very strong opinions about the ACT, but what's... Yes, exactly. Oh, Azana, that's a really good point. It's not vocab-based. Heather, I like that you said that. The SAT has five answer choices. The ACT has four, except for in the math section. Oh, and it's optional to write that. So you guys know a lot. That's really good. Oh, I like that. So Habibi's saying ACT has tighter time limits. And for the, the essay, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not the essay section. For the reading and the science sections, that reading is quite the sprint. If you don't practice for reading ahead of time, it's going to surprise you. Most, most often it will surprise people. Heather, wow, you guys know so much. Yeah, the ACT does have geometry, but you know what? You're going to have only four out of 60 questions that are trigonometry. I said geometry, trigonometry. FOLA, it does not require prior knowledge. You can walk into the test and not have to have studied anything specific. SAT does not have trigonometry. And the fonts are different. So if you already know about these tests, that's fabulous. If you don't, you're in the right spot. You want to know this now and not the day before. So taking more, a more in-depth look at each tip, this is the way that it's structured. And we have found that students who know more about what happens at each moment within the test, and that's true of anything, you're going to do that much better. So the ACT is all about preparation. And a lot of students really enjoy the ACT because they don't feel like it's trying to trick them. The SAT oftentimes, and if you're taking that test as well, all of the stuff you're learning for the ACT crosses over to the SAT. The difference is, especially in the math section, is the SAT you got to look out for, for tricks that they might try to throw in towards the end of questions. Um, the ACT is said to be very, very straightforward. But it, the same is for both tests in terms of preparation. You want to prepare ahead of time. So there's no wrong answer penalty, which means you do not want to leave anything blank. So we have, we have one practice question we're going to do today. But in terms of what you're going to see most value out of for today, we're going to talk about the recommended approaches. So we, have, we only pulled one question from Grocket. Grocket has over 1,600 questions for the ACT and over 1,700 for SAT. Um, but today's video for week one has three practice questions. Yeah, and Grocket has a ton of practice questions. 
So in terms of the structure, you can read on ACT.org about the structure, but it really has to do with your plan. And when we talk more in depth about each section, especially when you get more towards test day, we're going to talk about strategies for handling time. But right now, this far out from test day, we really want you to be familiar with the approach that you need to be using. Your timing is going to come a little bit later. So for these chats, that's a great question. So are we going to meet up again? So our plan is, this is our kickoff event. We wanted everyone to get a chance to chat, to meet us, to understand who's going to be putting up those blog posts and whose voice you hear when you watch the videos. That's going to be me. Um, also, we have a mascot. So actually, for those of you who are wondering, what am I doing here exactly? Um, we have a mascot. And we are going to be just cheering you along the way. Here's our mascot. So if you're on grocket.com, because I know a lot of our students like to have multiple windows open. If you're on grocket.com, any group games that you see with Taco near them, his name is Taco Pete. He's a real dog. Um, he's a rescue. I'm a huge animal lover and have rescued over... Oh, I'm, I'm going to be on my 16th rescue dog soon. Um, and then I find homes for them. When you see Taco, you know that it's a game we've set up for you. So again, you don't have to use Grocket. It's, it is a monthly subscription if you do want to sign up. But even if you're checking it out for three days, you'll see I've already put together games. And if you see the Taco, then you know that and by the taco I mean the cute little dog, he's eight pounds and scared of everything, um, then you know it's a game that we set up for you. So any game with taco near them this week, it has to do with the first 13 points in the math section that you're going to be working on. So we're going to break everything, everything down by points, we're going to break everything down by weeks, and if you want to join us for the ride, we will be happy to have you. So for next week, it's going to be asynchronous because we know everybody has a lot of stuff going on in the summer. So we're going to meet three times. We're going to meet now at the midway point and then a week before the test. In the interim weeks, you're going to have access to the blog like you always do. I'm going to post videos to YouTube. And if somebody wanted to set up a Facebook page, actually Taco Pete has his own Facebook page. If you want to find him, you can post there. Um, but what we're really looking to do is provide structure weekly asynchronously so you can you can get to it at any time because we don't know what what your schedule is going to look like so we're going to give you the url for the blog and we're going to put up a blog post right afterwards so knowing the structure all of this is preliminary but you're wondering okay wait but how do i increase my score how is this going to work we're going to keep going and you're going to see we're not just talking about doing question after question. We're talking about really thinking about your approach. So knowing the structure of each section, one thing that people don't realize about English in particular, there are five separate essays. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to read them the way you would read a peer essay. So if you're in English class and you're supposed to be looking over someone's essay, that's how you're supposed to read these. It's not the same way you're reading something in the ACT reading section. So knowing what the test is trying to check, that's super, super helpful. So what a lot of people really like about the ACT is that it's checking specifically things you're going to learn in college. So why would the English section need you to peer review? Go ahead and tell us in the chat box, why do they want to check that for college? <laughs> I like that. Maybe check to if you can speak in English. And we've got great responses here. And if you're having trouble seeing the PowerPoint, you can leave this room and come back in. Okay, so you all have gotten such great ideas up here in the chat box. Yes, it has to do with reading over peer papers and also your own work. So it doesn't matter what you're planning on studying in college, you still have to be able to convey what you want to say. And professors 
have so many students and they don't have a lot of time to be trying to figure out what you were trying to say because of grammatical errors. So that's exactly right. So tell us in the chat box, what are you planning on studying? And feel free to tell us you have no idea. But I will tell you, before I even see what you're going to type, you're going to need no to know how to proofread a paper, your own or somebody else's. So for example, Heather is looking at pre-med. She's still going to have to be able to turn in papers. She's still going to have to be able to look over someone else's work and let them know if there's a grammatical error. We don't want that to detract from her brilliance. Kendra, looking through scripts and looking through uh, short plays or soliloquies that you're going to perform. Computer science, you're going to have to read very detailed instructions. Yes, <laughs> if you can be an engineer and proofread, you are going to have a lot of friends. Quantum mechanics, nice. Isaac, I'm not sure. Calligraphy, um, that's going to be an interesting one to find. I'm not sure which university offers that. So if you think about the ACT not as your enemy, but as something that colleges actually are using just to make sure that you have the skills you're going to need when you get there, that makes it a lot more friendly and a lot easier to think about and to approach. So automatically, if you just start thinking about the ACT English as, oh, I'm looking over somebody else's paper, it actually is not nearly as bad as you may have thought. And some students really like this section. Now for math, get ready for awesomeness in math. The secret to this section is timing. It is an order of difficulty. So you better not spend just one minute per question. That's not going to work out so well. I mean, by law of averages, yeah, that's fine. But in terms of how quickly you're supposed to be moving, you spend one minute on the first 20 questions, you are going to be hurting for time later on. So you're going to spend less than 20 minutes on the first 20, about 20 minutes on the middle 20, and more time, the most amount of time, towards the end. So if you've never tried it that way, oh my goodness, you're going to love it. So if you're worried about math section, the math section the most, we are then going to introduce you to the recommended approach, and that's also going to make a difference. So thinking about cramming for this test actually makes my head hurt just thinking about it. Please don't do that. We're so glad to have you here now because there are a bunch of different things you want to incorporate that make it that much easier for you. It is super manageable. Oh my goodness, yes. It's actually one of my favorite sections because students oftentimes see a really big increase right away. Once you start looking at it in terms of timing and looking at it in terms of the approach, everything starts to fall into place. <clears throat> For reading, okay, so here's one that a lot of people worry about. Reading is just one of those, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do, when is it over, it's over too soon type of situations. The thing here is, the passages are always in the same order. However, you shouldn't be doing them in order unless that's what you like. A lot of times, prose fiction is the hardest. And you know what types of questions they have there? They have inference questions. And when students hear inference, they go, oh. Inference questions are some of the worst questions for students. I, I like them, but only because I am a certified librarian and I love reading. But inference questions, they're packed in that first section. That prose fiction passage, lots of inference questions. So if you know that, where would you say you'd like to start? Take a look at the four options. Tell us in the chat box, where would you want to start? We have a lot of students who actually work backwards. They start with natural science. Heather likes prose fiction. We do have students who really like prose fiction. It's just their thing. That's me, actually. I really like prose fiction. Chris says social studies. The thing about social studies and humanities is the structure is usually really solid. So it's an intro, body paragraphs, conclusion for social studies and humanities both. And chance, you could try doing them all at the same time. That sounds like it would hurt your head. Okay, Aparna, I'm so glad you mentioned boring and confusing. 
please watch the instructional videos we're going to have every week. We're going to talk about how to take this test apart by the by our teeth if we wanted to. We could rip it apart with our teeth. We are going to attack it more than we're going to think, oh my gosh, this is terrible. If you have an approach and you feel confident, it's it makes such a big difference. It's like when little kids are in an arcade. Some little kids just love to go to the ones that give them all the tickets. And the reason is because people like to win. They really do. Even if you're not that competitive, winning feels good. So that's what we're looking to do. So if you have anxiety about this, if you've been thinking I'm not sure what to do, we're going to talk about winning and we're going to get really good at it so we get all our points. We are really passionate about test prep because it's something you have to do, but it doesn't have to be terrible. So we're going to talk about how to rip these sections apart, get our points, and get in, get out, get done. It really helps you fight the boredom, absolutely. And if you find that the social aspect is what is going to keep you going, the group games have chat boxes. So every question you see is what someone else is seeing. And you work on it together, and you can complain about it together. We do monitor the chats just to make sure everyone's being respectful. But you guys can talk about how terrible it is or how great it is, and you can make friends and meet back again and make it just that much better. Science is very similar to reading in terms of the time crunch. Our students have found that the time that they have to spend, first of all, it doesn't always feel great because they're trying to rush through it, but then it seems to be all done before they've even gotten started. And this is only if they haven't broken down the section in terms of question types and passage types. So this is going to be week three. Week three is going to be science, and we're really going to help you out. We're going to show you when to be looking really carefully and when to just glance at the graph and see the overall trend. So we're going to walk you through this. Another thing to keep in mind is conflicting viewpoints. There's only one type of that passage. So if that's not your favorite, save it for last. We want you to pick up the easier points first. So yes, we want to remind everyone to be respectful. Thank you, Chance. Yep, and we're going to do, we only have one practice question to do, but we also have a video that has three practice questions. Um, another thing that we're going to talk about is the approaches. So in terms of the value of being here, it's starting, if it hasn't started for you already, this is stuff you may not have known. So if you're looking at, okay, where am I going to find that golden ticket? It might be right here, like with the word concise. Can you tell us in the chat box, what does concise mean? This may revolutionize your English section. I'm loving the engagement we've got going on in the chat. Thank you so much for participating. And such great answers. It's short and to the point. Very specific. Chris, I like that you said in few words. Did you know? that if you spot an error and you want to change it, the first place you should go is the shortest answer. Check to see if that one's right. If it is, you're all done. Pick it and move on. You can read the other ones if you want to, and we have students who worry about not reading the other ones. But the ACT and the SET actually put a premium on conciseness. So a lot of students will be in between two answer choices, not realizing that conciseness is such an important thing, and they'll put, put something down that's not necessarily wrong, it's just longer than the other one. So you can pick up automatically an extra two points, just knowing conciseness. So if you're looking for those little nuggets of understanding of, oh, this is why I'm here tonight, this might be one right here. If you didn't know that already, oh my goodness. We are very, very happy to tell you that one. So conciseness is very, very important. Another thing, and this happens mostly with students who haven't taken a lot of practice tests, especially ACT practice tests. Is there ever no error? Is no error okay or no change? Yeah. Do you know that it's about 20% of the time? So if you're getting a ton of no change, you've got too many. If you have none at all, then that's a problem. And if you do it every single time to save time, you're, you're costing yourself some points there. Right, so Destiny, I'm so glad you mentioned, sometimes you get paranoid. So that's why if you're getting through the sections 
in a timely manner, you can go back and check to see on, especially on your answer grid, you can see it lined up, see how many answer choice A's you have, and you'll be able to check to see if it's too many or not enough. And it's about one out of every four questions, yep. Aparna, I'm so glad you asked that. When you see omit the underlying portion, it used to be nine times out of ten that's correct. At this point, they sort of caught on that everybody knows that. So you want to double check. It's about eight out of ten times omit the underlying portion is correct. Um, but uh, oftentimes, because they love conciseness, they want to get rid of stuff. Yes, if the words do not fit, you must omit. And that's going to be part of our English in week four. Week four is English. We started off with math because that's something that builds so much momentum. And we already put the video together for you and we put together what homework you should be doing. So we're getting you off to a strong start. And then next week we'll be reading. Oh, a part of those are a little bit different about whether or not you should delete something that has to do with organization. So we'll talk about that in week four. So the week's work, this week is week one, is math. Next week's reading, science, and actually I have it all laid out in the, the slides. I'll show you how we're going to do it. And it's all very strategic. So for math, what we're doing this week is we're talking about foundational concepts. And the reason why we don't just jump into trigonometry is because the approach works for every single question. But there are some questions that just make you feel so good about using the approach. Uh, and we want to make sure you have a really strong foundation before you start trying to jump through hoops and, you know, juggle with fire and those types of things. So everyone at this point should be reading the question. I can't imagine that you're just closing your eyes and trying to feel the question. Oh, it might have a letter. You want to actually read the question. <clears throat> but one thing that students don't necessarily do automatically is look at the answer choices. So you've before you do any calculations, why are you going to look at the answer choices? And no, you should not see a question right now. We're just looking at the method. So why are you going to look at the answer choices? We're just talking about the method here. Rebecca, yeah! You want to cross out things that don't work and don't do extra work. Absolutely. Khadija says don't do extra work. Yeah, oh, full oh, I love it to plug it in, yes. Or you could back solve, yes, I'm so glad to see. The answer choices are super, super, super helpful. And on the ACT math section, there's always answer choices, unlike SAT that has grid ins. Now, in terms of de de deciding, I'm so excited, I can barely talk, deciding how to solve, you have four different options. And we're going to be having you work on that this week. And then answer, uh, when you're working on questions towards the end of the section, step four is going to be really, really important. Towards the beginning of the section, something that looks obviously right probably is. But in the higher difficulty questions, you have to make sure you're actually done before you go anywhere because you might be missing out on a valuable, valuable point towards the end of the section. And picking numbers and back solving work for over half of all the questions. So 31 or more questions can be solved using picking numbers or back solving. So you want to know how to do those as well. Word problems, we actually, in our study guide, um, in our study plan, and in the guidance we're going to provide, there is a segment on word problems. So if word problems are tricky for you, we're actually going to be covering that in week five. Sorry, I had to think about it for a moment. For reading, we're going to talk more about this next week um, in the video, so it's all going to be asynchronous so you can get to it from anywhere. You don't have to come back to this classroom. We're, we'll be here in week five and week eight. But we want to make sure that you know what to look for and how to change your approach according to what type of passage you're looking at. One of the biggest things is predicting an answer because those answer choices really well written. There's no answer choice you look at and you go, oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, they're really good. So we want you predicting an answer. And we're going to talk more about that as well. For science, identifying the purpose, method, and results is the, by far the biggest thing to do. But you know what else? Knowing the common variables and patterns is super, super important. So two videos that I've thought of already that would be really helpful for you to have are, you ready? I know you're excited. Grammar rules, 
So the nine things to look for in ACT English. And then the other thing is the common concepts for science, like independent, dependent variable. So if you have other suggestions, so grammar rules, oh, and math formula, sorry, I thought of three, just kidding. So I want to make grammar rules video, I want to make science terms and concepts videos, and I want to make, the last one, the little one, I want to make math formulas. So can you think of anything else that you're thinking, okay, because we're going to talk about all just things in general, but can you think of any other things? Yep, science terms. <laughs> and science really should be called reading in science, yep. So let us know if you can think of anything else and put it in the chat box or send it over to Ask a Crockett Expert. But those, those are three of the things that I thought, you know what, those are standalone, not just, you know, the weekly, this is what we're doing, but standalone ones of, you know what, everybody really needs those. The grammar, the math formulas, what you need to know, what you don't need to know, and science terms. Oh, and the ACT, yep, yeah, ACT essay. So get ready for a Grokket question. We're talking about elimination. And I asked you earlier, why would you look at the answer choices for math? Well, here's an excellent example. So we're going to take tip number five and put it to the test on a Grokket question. And actually, I grabbed this one from Grokket SAT so that you wouldn't see any overlap. Oh, Charmaine, thank you so much for letting me know. Pacing on the reading. That's an awesome idea. I like it. I think pacing for each section. That's really good. Pacing is really important. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Okay, so a part of saying, wait, do we look at the answers or we don't look at the answers? So it has to do with which section you're working in. Math. Look at the answers. Yes, please, 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 please look at the answers. Where don't you look at the answers? No, that's a great question, Aparna. That's really important. And you're, if you asked it, you're not the only person wondering. It's the reading section. Erica, that's interesting. For science, it depends on the science question. Generally, they're not too tricky. But that's really interesting, Erica, that you were thinking, maybe science too. So math, look at the answers. Reading, predict first. Okay, so here is the thing. We're going to ask you what you think the correct answer is. But in the chat, so don't tell us the correct answer in the chat. Instead, can you tell us what automatically is wrong? If you were just to take the number 100, add 20, and then subtract 35, what would you get? And I have to plug in my little writing pad. So Sarav says 85. Is that true? Or if you just take 100, add 20, subtract 35, would you get 85? Yeah. And that's what so many people do. They say, okay, so we take something, we add 100, um, we take 100, add 20, subtract 35. Yeah, Aparna, I want the wrong answer in the chat. You can put the right answer in the poll. So you want to eliminate something that's automatically wrong. So you're going to eliminate 85 because that's the trap. If you just take 100, Add 20, subtract 35, you're going to get to answer choice D. So this one is the trap. Now 100 is a really good number to pick. But once you add 20, you then have to do something a little bit different. Because you're not taking 35% of a hundred, you're taking 35% of 120. 
So let's see what the math looks like. Can you tell us in the chat box, what does of mean when you're translating English into math? It does mean multiply. And I promise I do not print like a kindergartner in real life. It's just with the technology, it slows me down. And I'm writing on what we call a bamboo pad. So if of means multiply, we want 35% of 120. So we take 120, we subtract 35% of it. Of means multiply. So if you either forgot that or know that you're not 100% sure about it, try to memorize it now. It's going to serve you very well in the future. So we'll give you a moment to do the math if you haven't done so already. Oh, this is supposed to be an equals. Yep, it's going to be 42, and it's going to give you 78. Perfect. Okay, so we're at a 70% accuracy. Which isn't bad, especially starting now in our prep. If you didn't get that right, and I'll give you an awesome check mark. Um, if you didn't get that right, you don't have to panic. Test day is not tomorrow. And this is a really common question. They're asking you, can you do a two-step, um, not dance, that would be nice too, a two-step percentage problem. Can you? If you can, great. Move on to the next math concept. If you can't, hey, you know where we got a lot of questions? On Grocket. You also have them online. You can find stuff on YouTube. We just want you studying. That's the most important thing to us. We want you to have the opportunity to raise your score. So using elimination is one of the many ways we're going to be helping you out. And Justin's going to write out the steps in the chat because Justin is awesome. Aparna, that's a great question. Are there a lot of percentage questions? Well, Take a look. We broke it down for you. Math has 36 points. I know, big shock, right? We want you to concentrate this first week on 13 of those 36 points. You don't need to know all of them right now. We want you looking at foundational concepts. So week one of math is going to be 13 points, 7 points are algebra. That's a lot. The only other category that's tied with that is plane geometry. And then coordinate geometry is six points. So that's a lot of points. We want you getting started now. Ratios, proportions, and averages are four points. And percentages are in there. Number properties are just two points. So that's a good question. Why would you have, we're gonna have you just do two point category first week out. What type of concept do you think number properties are? I've been saying it starts with an F-O-U. Foundational concept. Yeah, they're the foundation. So we could have you start just anywhere. We could have you start with trigonometry, but we want to not hurt your head. We want to help your head. So we're starting off with algebra, ratios, proportions, averages, and number properties are all foundational. Then for reading, I'm not trying to torture you, I promise. I picked out prose fiction and natural science because those are the two that require an adjusted approach. You can't just jump right into them, so you want to be practicing them now and not later. We're going to post all this to our blog so you can keep track of your study plan and know what's happening. And you know, when we schedule group games, when you see the taco, you know that he's on the study plan. So taco, you will see him. He has... 12 p.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. games on tomor tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. So if you see the taco, you know that he's part of the study plan. He's a real dog. He won't be there. Uh, like I told you, he's scared of everything. 
Um, and his original name was Bubbles, so you can only imagine. He tries not to go out in public. But we're using him as our mascot. He does have a Facebook page, and we're using him as our mascot just so you guys can identify which, which games are yours, because we do have a lot of students on Crockett. Taco and Bubbles, yeah. <laughs> so Taco Pete is um, a Miami rescue, so we're very happy to have him as our mascot. So I'll bring him up at the end as well. Science is going to be week three. I've got a lot of points to throw at you for week three, and it's because those are actually the easier points to grab, so I want you to be working on those. English, we're doing week four, so I'm going to roll out the grammar video for you. We are going to have a big week five. So week five, we're going to meet together. We're going to meet back here, and we're going to say, all right, how, how's everybody doing? Y'all still in one piece? And we're going to be reviewing... Just everything in general, we'll do a quick recap at the beginning, it'll be 90 minutes as well. Um, and then we're going to break it down and do some math and reading as well. So we thought about this really strategically, we want to give you every opportunity to increase your score. So a part of this, I'm so glad you asked that. So the questions don't aren't weighed differently at all. There's no particular question that's worth a thousand points. Well, that wouldn't make sense mathematically anyway. But it has to do with how often you see them. So out of the 36 points in math, plane geometry is going to be frequent enough to, to garner or to equal out to 7 points. No, Aparna, you are, you are asking really, really great questions. This is the first time you've ever met us, so absolutely, those are really, really good questions. Week 6 is actually going to be a nice week in terms of we're getting towards the midway point. We're not throwing a lot of stuff at you for week six. You can see the point values. They seem like they're a little bit lower, but it's because you've already learned so much already. As we get closer to, closer to test date, it's going to be about review, not new stuff. We know what we're doing. We have decades of expertise together, and we have a lot of enthusiasm. So we, we're really thinking about it from your perspective in terms of, well, you're going to be back in school. What is it that you're going to learn that week? And we're putting all this on YouTube, so if your test date isn't this first test day coming up, you can start your study plan in two weeks, because we're 10 weeks out from the next test date. So know that this is, we call, it's called evergreen, meaning it's going to work no matter when you start it. Just make sure you do the timing and you actually have a calendar in front of you to know when to start what. For week seven, it says 36 points. But it's a review, so we're, it's not like the first time you've ever seen the 36 points. It's just we'll be talking overall about the strategy. So all of this, all of the videos that we're talking about, everything that's going on YouTube, everything on our blog is free. So if you want to use the red book to do this entire program, you absolutely can. All of this information we're putting out for everybody, for people who didn't even attend this event tonight. We just want to help people. Same thing with Taco Pete. He actually wound up costing me a lot of money in vet bills because he, when I first had him as a foster, he was actually in quite bad shape. But he's happy and he's healthy, still afraid of everything. But it's about making things better. We want to make things better for you. We're really passionate about it. So... We're providing this, you can use Rocket, but you can also just use the materials that you have at home. So it's not, this isn't a you must purchase. It's a, hey, we really know how to do something, and we want to share it with you. Oh, you, it's our pleasure, really. We do get super, super excited about this. And then week eight, we're going to meet back here again, and we're going to go through, what have you learned so far? How are you doing? Um, have you taken a... A diagnostic recently? Have you taken a full length? How, what's going on? Are you really excited? How are you going to celebrate when you get your score? And also, are you planning on taking the test again? Is this a check-in type of test day or is this a, this is it test day? So we're going to be cheering you on. That's our big focus here is just making everything that much easier for you and cheering you on, letting you know we're here, letting you know we've done this. All of the experts that you're going to be working with are people who have aced these types of tests. So in particular, our team, 95 percentile and above. So 95th percentile and above, we know what we're talking about. We're here to help. Um, 
And we're really passionate about making sure that this is something you can add to your application rather than something you're really, really worried about. <laughs> we, yeah, 95th percentile and above, um, we're, we're passionate. We know what we're doing and we're, we're really excited. So what does it mean for you? What is week one? What is your mission? 13 points. Your mission's 13 points and you have some options. And I wrote this out. We're going to go into a final layout actually. Um, you have some options here. So, grok it solo. If you want to do this all on your own, just sit down, look at your computer screen, get through it, and do it all on your own, not talk to anybody. You absolutely can. It's the first seven of the 17 segments, and I have a YouTube video that shows you how to locate those. If you want to do group practice, then you can find Taco. And the typing you hear, um, I'm just letting our team know that we have a link to our blog that you can. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm glad if you feel more calm. It's a lot easier when you've got a plan. Um, or this is 90 questions that you'd have to do on your own. The good thing is that we can, if we know a lot of our study group is using the Red Book, we can actually see what we can do about reviewing some of that and putting that in a YouTube video. If we know that a lot of our students are using Grokit, then we'll, we'll go over the highest viewed questions on Grokit. We're going to be actually taking a cue from you. It really has to do with what is it that you're, what time are you putting in, what are you doing, um, what progress do we see on Grokit because we have administrator access so we can see when you're doing a great job we can see when you put in a lot of time and energy so depending on what you decide it works for you we're going to shape it according to what you are doing so let's take a look at our plan so we've got our taco we have our recommended approach this is what we want you focusing on and we already put together a video for you 